What's happening everybody? So, you've got yourself a modern Mopar and chances are it's got Hemi somewhere on it, at least in a few places if you've got a V8. But what exactly does that mean and why does it mean performance just in general? Like in the common lexicon of Car Guy, Hemi means Mopar and it means performance. It means the top of the line in terms of either horsepower and torque or uh, collectability, whatever the case might be. Well, modern Hemis, if you want to call them that, have got that, na that name speckled all over them, basically to harken back to that legend of the Hemi engine. And what Hemi means, it's short for hemispherical, and it refers to the shape of the, cons the combustion chamber, but it also refers to the orientation of the valve train. In other words, a wedge head which is what you would typically find on a regular V8, like an LS, uh, what you'll find is those valves are in line across the cylinder head. What the Hemis do is they rotate that valve orientation 90 degrees. In essence, you have the intake runner from the intake manifold facing your intake valve, and the exhaust valve in the head is facing the exhaust manifold. It's also known as a shotgun head, and what it basically means is that the intake stream going into the intake or going into the combustion chamber has a direct line of sight to the intake manifold. All that gobbledygook means is that they are extremely good at flowing air, but they have one distinct disadvantage among others and that is that they do not promote velocity very well, and they are a little bit more sensitive to knock because of that. They're basically more of a tumble port as opposed to a swirl port design. That's just how they are, and you've got much larger valves that you're working with. See, by orientating that valve train 90 degrees, getting it up and out of the way of the, the piston itself, it allows you to run a much more aggressive valve angle and it allows you to run a bigger valve and that bigger valve is going to be unshrouded. Again, moves a lot of air, but it's not very efficient in terms of moving it quickly. Velocity, the thing that makes power down low. It's also a bit more of a pain in the ass to assemble. Uh, if you've ever worked on an LS, that is the engine that you would more or less learn how to work on a modern V8. If you're a little bit older, chances are you're working on a 350 Chevy or a 302 Ford. Same idea. For you Mopar guys, it'd be the 360 more than likely. All wedge heads, all inline valve configurations. So why did it take so long for Mopar to reintroduce the Hemi into V8s? I mean, they were making V8s for a long time, and if Hemis were so great, you would have, you'd have thought anyway that that would have been the architecture they'd have stayed with. Well. The problem is that because of the design itself with the larger ports, larger valves, because really that's the only reason why you use a head in that configuration, and the fact that it promotes no real velocity down low, that means that it is going to be more difficult to get that particular platform to pass strict emission standards, number one, and number two, it's also more difficult to get that type of a cylinder head uh, platform to do well under partial throttle. Uh, the older Hemis were fantastic at making big horsepower numbers, but there's a reason why they just didn't sell like hotcakes, kind of like Hellcats sell today, or 392s sell today. They didn't do very well at partial throttle. They were known to get terrible fuel mileage, and aside from the fact that if you stood on the thing, you could make big power, another problem that the early Hemis had was that they used a much heavier piston. It's got to be bigger because it has to fill that entire combustion chamber. Again, a difference that the old Hemis have with the new Hemis is that the new Hemis are, they're known as a semi-Hemi in that it's not a true hemispherical combustion chamber. It's more of a pentastar design where you've got some or you've got considerable more quench area. It just means more material. And the only part that is Hemi, so to speak, is going to be where those valves are in the cylinder head. All of that basically makes for an, a cylinder head that flows extremely well, 
and can still offer decent velocity at lower piston speeds to give you better throttle response and give you better fuel mileage down low. But it took him forever to figure that out. Now, if, you're, if you've made it this far, chances are you may have thought, well, wait a second, what about a four valve engine? Yep, all four valve engines, you could kind of call a Hemi just by the fact that they have their intake valves on the intake runner facing side of the head. It's how they're, I mean, you can't really do it any other way. And in that respect, it's not necessarily a Hemi because it's not a true hemispherical combustion chamber, but it is still that Pentastar style uh, combustion chamber and it is still a shotgun head. So in a lot of ways, that Coyote is almost more Hemi than your Hemi. But that's just kind of playing with words there. What I wanted to do is talk to you guys a little bit about what I thought about the modern Hemi and how it fits into the whole American muscle car legacy. Um, Dodge did a pretty good job with the 6.1 and the 5.7 leading into the 6.4. Now, think of it like this. The 6.1 when it was released was 425 horsepower, that magic 425 horsepower that the original 426 cubic inch Hemi was reported to make. The problem with that is guys hear that, Mopar guys hear that number and that's the first engine that pops into their head is that 425 horsepower rated street Hemi that you're probably used to hearing about. Basically, the garden variety Hemi that you would find in a Charger or a Challenger or whatever Mopar we're talking about, that's the engine that you're thinking about when you hear 425 horsepower. But the reality is that the street Hemi isn't really the Hemi that put the Hemi name on a pedestal. It's the Super Commando 426 Hemi. The differences between the two, well, Super Commando had a more aggressive camshaft. It was also a solid lifter and it had a 12 and a half to one compression ratio. Street Hemi, on the other hand, less aggressive camshaft, lower compression ratio, and it was a hydraulic lifter at that. So when you compare the two, yeah, they're rated at the same horsepower, but that Street Hemi is a realistic 425 horsepower. It just is. Um, yeah, you'll hear some gross numbers that might put it at 480 or 490, but the reality of that engine is it's a legitimate 425 horsepower engine. If it were to be rated in SAE numbers though, you're looking at more like 380, 390. That Super Commando on the other hand, which is again, what put that Hemi name on such a pedestal, it's what started cleaning house in the uh, early and mid 60s, or early mid 60s I should say, in 1964 is when it was released. That's the engine that just destroyed the competition at drag strips for about two or three years until Chevrolet and Ford started to play catch up. That engine, that Super Commando, was more like, yeah, it's about a 600, maybe a 580 horse engine. But that's about it. Now, you might say, well, that's a lot of horsepower for its day, and it was. But the funny thing about it is that when you start to play with numbers from back in the day versus modern SAE equivalents, again, Street Hemi might have only been rated at about 380 or 390 by today's standards. That Super Commando might have been around 550, maybe five and a quarter by today's standards. The 392 that I've got in my car and that what you may have in yours as well, it's rated at 485 from the factory and that's a legit number. It is not underrated or overrated. That's a pretty legitimate number. And with just a little bit of tuning, you can get that thing up around what would be considered an SAE corrected five and a quarter number. You're not that far away from what your fathers or your grandfathers were playing with back in the day with the true Hemis. And I don't mean to disparage the legacy or the legend of Hemi, but it comes up relatively regularly when Mopar guys start talking and debating on whether or not this is a modern Hemi versus the Hemis of yore. Well, the problem is, is that when Dodge released the Hemis back in, I can't remember, for the trucks, it was a huge deal in terms of marketing anyway. It was, we've re-released the Hemi. Well, yeah, you kind of did. 
and you kind of spurred the legacy on with the 6-1, and the 6-4 is carrying it about as far as it can go, apparently, considering it might be killed in the next couple of years. But what I guess the point that I'm making is, is that although you may not have a true Hemi, you've got about as much Hemi as what you can make work efficiently by any standard whatsoever. It'll make basically the same amount of power that the absolute king of the jungle made back in the day. It will surpass what's commonly referred to as the Hemi uh, in the street Hemi power numbers, and it will do so while knocking out really, for what it is, outstanding fuel mileage, and it has a reliability factor that the older engines could never even come close to. So, is the modern Hemi more special than the old Hemi? Yeah, that's debatable, but I will say this. It does a hell of a lot more things a hell of a lot better than that original did. I'm just glad that we have the original to talk about. Even though that by today's standards it may be a dinosaur, and its name, I guess you could call it, in Hemi has been splattered all over every V8 that Mopar has made over the last 10 years, I can say this. It does still bring up a little bit of pride for us to be able, as Mopar guys, to carry that name with us, at least as far as we've been able to up to this point. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think the modern Hemis are as special as the old ones, or do you think that the old ones hold a special place? I'd love to hear your comments. Let me know what you think. Adios.